Good morning. It's Sunday, 27th of March, 2016. This is Sylvia Shivamurti and you're listening to the newspaper reviews on www.adhavaneng.com. Let's now look at the newspaper highlights from today's newspapers. The top highlight in Sunday Observer says, Local industry group counters metal bid. Major constructors of Sri Lanka submitted a conceptual paper to the Department of External Resources of the Finance Ministry on Thursday, outlining the consortium's ability to build 65,000 housing units for the conflict-affected families in the north and east using local expertise and personnel. The government has agreed to consider the proposal. Representatives of MCSL also met Asian Development Bank officials on 20th March to hand over the concept paper and to initiate a discussion on the proposed project. And the highlight at the middle says, Ranil's China Visit – Impetus for Sino-SL Investments and Trade A free trade agreement, tiny port city and Hambantota port projects are expected to feature prominently during Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh's upcoming visit to China next month. The high-level trip on April 6 will be undertaken to strengthen ties between the two countries. The government is expected to take up new joint venture projects including the Southern Highway Extension and Kandy and Ratnapura Highways with the world economic giant. Prime Minister Vikram Singh told Parliament that deals with China will be finalizing during the trip, which is a follow-up to the one undertaken by President Maitripala Sinsena last year. Another highlight says, Hasan Ali's trip of powers. The rift in the Sri Lanka Museum Congress has widened after party secretary Hazan Ali was stripped off all of his powers. Slamming the actions, Ali charged he was being victimized by the SLMC leadership. Ali said he was disappointed at the treatment he received from the party leadership since the last high command meeting. And the highlight at the bottom says, Constitutional Assembly begins April 5th. The parliament will convene for the first time as a constitutional assembly when the house meets on April 5th. On that day, parliament sessions will start at 1 p.m. and the house will adjourn at 2 p.m. After the adjournment of parliament, the legislative body will convene as the constitutional assembly, parliament sources told the Sunday Observer yesterday. Parliament on March 9th unanimously adopted a resolution moved by Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe for the appointment of the Constitutional Assembly to formulate a new constitution for Sri Lanka. Let's now look at the paper highlight in Sunday Times. Another international money swindling racket detected here. Yet another global money laundry scam on the heels of the mega 100 million US dollars Bangladeshi central bank fraud filed by an alert Sri Lankan bank has been nipped in the bud again by a local bank. Ironically, the latest transactions took place on March 2nd and March 4th, the same days Chinese hackers transferred 20 million US dollars to the Sri Lankan NGO Shalika Foundation. Another highlight says, Hacking highest main culprit still at large. While Bangladesh investigators are to visit Sri Lanka in connection with the 100 million US dollars hacking heist that has rocked the global financial world, the main culprit in Sri Lanka is still at large, Criminal Investigation Department sources said. A senior CID officer told the Sunday Times that the NGU Shalika Foundation, which had been set up in the guise of helping low income families, was being probed under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. There's another highlight which says, Use less water or face cuts. The National Water Supply and Drainage Board yesterday warned of possible water cuts if the prevailing drought conditions continued. General Manager B. W. R. Balasurya told the Sunday Times that the water purification plants were working beyond the capacity and the board might have to impose cuts if the consumption patterns continued. The consumption has increased due to the excessive heat and people are using more water for drinking and bathing, he said. Mr. Balasuriya appealed to the people to refrain from using purified tap water for the washing of vehicles or watering of plants. And the highlight at the bottom says, more than 70 tough conditions set for port city developers. The permit granted by the Coast Conservation and Coastal Resource Management Department to the developers of Colombo Port City is highly conditional with more than 70 environmental stipulations attached to it. And now let's move to the paper highlights in Ceylon today. The top highlight says, One-hour power cuts imminent. 
the Ceylon Electricity Board has been compelled to impose at least one hour power cut daily in order to avoid power cuts during the new year, CEB Engineers Union warns. President of the Union Atulawanya Rashi urged the government to take non-political decision to face the situation, taking the severe drought experienced by the country into consideration. Another highlight says, Sandeep's neighbor speaks. Hope springs eternal. Another highlight says, Speculations over metal housing project. Swami Nathan scotches rumors. And the highlight of the middle says, A landmark judgment. Another highlight says, At the end of the war, I had only a piece of iron. And the highlight at the bottom says, Cut a in the ribs up. We brought you the paper highlights from today's newspapers and we'll be bringing back more tomorrow. Thank you.